So the, my review for the first Strangers movie is doing pretty well. I thank you guys for that. I really appreciate your support. So might as well talk about the second movie because that's one thing that fans really love to hear is me talking about a really bad movie. So The Strangers 2. What was the name of the movie? Pray at Night? Yeah, Pray at Night. So The Strangers Pray at Night is the second movie to the to the first to the first classic The Strangers, a movie that I really did enjoy. It's probably one of my top 10 favorite horror movies because it did one thing that, that a horror movie is supposed to do, and that is scare you. It makes you paranoid. It makes you wonder if you're alone or not. Those are things that people have phobias of, and the movie did it really well. As for this movie, it, it's, I don't know. I I mean, you don't want to do the same thing over and over again because that's just the result of madness. In this one, it just went from a really good a really good movie that had a lot of good potential to it to something that is absolutely stupid. You might as well call this movie, instead of The Strangers Pray at Night, you might as well call it The Three Stooges and How to End a Franchise Before It Even Begins. Because you have this family, and they're, they're going to their aunt and uncle's place because they're about to send their daughter to boarding school because she's quote-unquote a bad girl. And I don't know, I, I could talk about this, I could probably talk about this family for a while, but I can't because I don't think the writers even knew what they wanted to do with this family. Because throughout that entire, throughout their entire time when they're together, it almost looked like the writers were in one room together and say, okay, what are they doing? What are they saying? They're talking about what? And instead of, you know, trying to develop characters for these four characters, instead it dragged on for a really long time. There's a lot of awkward paused moments when it comes to this family. It felt like an hour before they even get to this trailer park. This trailer, this trailer park looks already shady enough as it is. And once when they get to their trailer, once when they're inside, it's like the director said, okay, let's get on to it. Let's not wait anymore. Because that's exactly when you hear the knock on the door. You see the girl outside saying, is Tamar here? You know, from the first movie, right? Exactly. And I am not kidding you right now. They, she would actually come back to the door and, and knock on it again to do the exact same thing. She did it in the first movie, but the first movie was a whole lot better. It was a lot more paranoia to that. But in this one, but in this one, they do answer the door. It looks like an actual, looks like the actual shot from the first scene. So clearly someone was trying to save on budget. And then, and then we have this big chase scene between, between these two teenagers and the three strangers from the first movie. And it just kind of feels a little comical at a point. Because you have this, I mean, the first movie, it's so claustrophobic. You're in one house and you don't feel like you're safe in this house. You try to get outside, you don't feel like you're safe outside. It just brings out that paranoia that the first movie gave out. In this one, in this movie, they have this entire trailer park to run around run around with. I mean, these trailers are not close together. They're all like a mile apart. And they go from one trailer to another, just trying to find a way to get out of this situation. Meanwhile, there are working cars like all over the place. The car situation, I really did notice because in the first movie, they did try to get in their car to get away, but their tires were flat. The car is clearly ruined, so there is no way they can get away with the car. But when the father and the son get into their minivan to search for the daughter, the car is perfectly fine. It was fine until they crash. And that, the crash scene, I just do have to point out this little detail. So they crash into this trailer, and the passenger door is clearly blocked. It is blocked, no way to get out of it. Yet when the son gets out to go search for his sister, door opens up perfectly fine. Which leads to what I could say is the best scene out of the entire movie, because is it Baghead? Yeah, I think it's Baghead, that's what they call him. He's the only male character out of, out of the three killers. After the son disappears, the father is impaled inside the truck, so he is not going anywhere. Well... He walks up to the passenger side door, gets into the truck, and just sits there. And I'm thinking to myself, yep, that, this is a scene that I do enjoy. I think that scene was pretty cool. The fact that, the fact that he would just sit there makes you think to yourself, ooh, is he going to kill him or is he just playing with him? He's doing both at the same time. So I gotta say that's the only good scene out, out of the movie. As for the rest of it, oh boy, how do I, where do I even begin? I mean, it's clear that they wanted to get ri get rid of the parents like right away in the film and have these teens run all over run all over the trailer park, and these teens do a whole lot of stupid stuff. Like for example, the the daughter is in one trailer and she hears this toy playing in the bedroom. It's a wind up toy, clearly does not run on batteries, and yet you have to go and investigate it. And then there is Dollface. I think her name is Dollface. Like sitting there, 
like sitting there on the side of the bed and I'm like, how did you not notice her? I would have, it would have been a lot more cooler if uh, she reached out to grab the toy and a hand would have grabbed her. I mean, I'm not the director of this film, so that would have been me. But instead, instead that scene happens and in that exact scene, Dollface would stab the, stab the daughter and for most of this movie, the daughter is clearly bleeding out. She has blood all over her. She's tripping all over the place trying to run but she can't but then later on in the film it's like she has some healing ability from a video game because she goes from possibly bleeding out to death to a certain limp and that's where the movie just kind of loses me you know and another scene that i didn't find horrifying i just found it kind of stupid was the pool scene in this movie because the pool lights turn on the brother is there with a golf club in his hand and this 80s music is playing in the background the 80s music what the hell I mean, I, I, rem I like the soundtrack a whole lot better in the first movie because the soundtrack in the first movie is just this record player playing in the background. And I didn't point this out in my Strangers review, but when I listened to the songs that was playing on that record player, it's about it's singers singing about singing about how they are killers. I did not notice that detail until I watched it again. It was really cool. In this one, it's just your average 80s music that just plays every now and then it just takes me out of the film but in this scene in particular one of the strangers runs up right behind the brother the brother swings the golf club and just knocks her out that wasn't horrifying that was hilarious but it seems like but it seems like they had no idea they had no idea really what to do for the ending of this film which which makes absolutely no sense because this because this movie goes from what could possibly be a Strangers fan fiction to a Three Stooges cartoon. Because they had no idea how to end this. They had no idea how to end this movie. It just kind of a lot of stupid situations. And there are so many moments, so many moments in this movie where I say to myself, I've seen this in other horror movies. A car, a car blowing up and is on fire, but the driver inside is still driving it, trying to run over one of the teens. I've seen that in the movie Christine. Or one of the teens trying to try, trying to flag down this car. The killer is at the killer is after them, and they're trying to climb in the back of the car when the driver's trying to get away. I've seen that in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So they're just borrowing a whole bunch of stuff from other movies, and they're just I I don't know. It's like they had no idea really what to do with this sequel. I didn't expect it to be the exact same thing, but I was expecting something a whole lot better. So I gotta say, the ending of this movie, not a big fan of. And as for the rest of the movie, ew, oh boy. I mean, the hour-long the hour long scene with the with the family members, I did not enjoy that. And with, and with this movie clearly being messy from start to finish, it's really noticeable. And another scene in particular that is clearly just there for a movie poster. The daughter is trying to run away from Dollface, but she runs into this runs into this fence. She's screaming for help. She's yelling. Nobody's in this trailer park, mind you. And then you see in the background, Doll, Dollface shows up and all such. But in the very next shot, when you see the daughter, she's running through backyards. Dollface is nowhere to be found. So that scene was there for one thing and one thing only, and that is the trailer. So the Strangers Pray at Night... Not a big fan of. I'm a huge fan of the first movie. That's that. This movie is just a really big step down. And what? And what? By talking about this, would I say the new movie would be good or bad? I don't know. I did not see the new movie, but I will check it out to see if I'm right or wrong. And I will put that review, put that review on my YouTube channel. So I gotta say, The Strangers Pray at Night, not as good as the first movie. I would say no one's gonna hate you if you skip it. So guys, The Strangers Pray at Night, have you seen it? What did you think of it? I mean, I could be wrong. There are a lot of Strangers fans out there that say the second movie is just as good as the first one. So whatever you guys think, comment that down below. Also, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.